In this video, we describe at a superficial level how indicators for acid-base reactions work. Right. So the idea here is that when, when you have a titration of an acid and a base, uh, you would like to have an indicator that changes color whenever you're getting uh, around the equivalent point. All right, so indicators uh, are actually acids uh, uh, and bases themselves. Uh, generally, they are actually weak acids, like phenolphthalein, for example. So the way that they generally work is like this. This will be your indicator, and then there is an acid-base equilibrium where you have formation of the conjugate base. Okay, so in general, what happens is that uh, the acid form of the indicator will have a color, which we're going to call X, and then uh, the conjugate base of the indicator will have a color that we're going to have, we're going to call Y, right? So the idea is that, well, if the acid form is dominant, then you will see color X, the color of the acid form, but if the uh, conjugate base is dominant, then you will see color Y, the color of the conjugate base, right? So our criterion, just for the sake of discussion, is that uh, if the concentration of the weak acid is 10 times larger than the concentration of the conjugate base, then you see color X, but color Y would be seen the other way around. If the concentration of the conjugate base is uh, 10 times greater than the con con uh, concentration of the weak acid. All right, so because this equilibrium constant has, uh, or this equilibrium has a constant that depends on the indicator, what we can actually do then is say, uh, what is the ideal situation? What are the properties that an indicator uh, need to have in order to be able to uh, be able to determine quite accurately what the equivalence point is? Okay, so uh, here you will have that this expression is just H plus concentration of A minus over HA. And here you can follow with that uh, that expression, take logarithms to arrive at something that is like this, pH, pK sub A, plus the logarithm of the concentration of conjugate base over the concentration of the acid. Okay, we can take this step uh, uh, beyond and say that pH minus pK sub A is going to be equal to the logarithm of the concentration of A minus of the concentration of HA. Okay, so here's what, the, what, what has to happen. Suppose that this is the titration of an acid with a base. This is how the pH changes uh, as a function of the volume of titrant, which in case it would be a base. So the curve is going to look like this, more or less, and this is how the equivalent point is. Equivalence point. Okay, so what you, you would like to have is this indicator to change color at the equivalent point so that you can stop the titration and then determine accurately what uh, the moles of acid would be in this case. Right, so, so notice how the, the math is going to work. What you, need, what you need to have right around this point is that if you're going from the acid to the base, that this uh, uh, ratio changes dramatically. Right before the equivalence point, you're going to have dominance of the weak acid and very little of the conjugate base, so you're going to see the color of uh, the weak acid, but then right at the equivalence point, this should flip, right, so that this concentration is now much greater than that one. Okay, and then you see the color of the conjugate base, right? So uh, the idea then here is that uh, in, order to, in order for this to happen, right, what you would like to do to, do to have is a change in the color with just one drop of uh, the base added, right? And uh, notice that in this whole curve, the only region where the pH changes dramatically, right, you need to change this, uh, uh, so that you can invert those fractions. The only place in the curve where that uh, uh, pH, uh, dramatic pH change takes place is at the equivalence point. Right? So the idea here is that if you have a pK sub A for that, titrate, for that uh, indicator that is uh, as close as possible to the pH of the equivalence point, then this color change will happen really quickly and it will be a very good uh, indicator for where the equivalence point is. Okay, so. Let's then examine uh, the example of phenolphthalein, which is one of the most common acid-base indicator, indicators. So phenolphthalein has a pK sub A of about 9.3. Okay? That means that uh, it's a really good indicator when you have a titration of a weak acid with a strong base. And it's a very good indicator for a weak acid with a strong base titration 
because the pH at the equivalence point is a little bit higher than neutral. Okay, that's because you have a conjugate base of the weak acid, and that conjugate base generates a basic solution. Right, so the typical uh, uh, pH at the equivalence point for for uh, the iterations of weak acids are higher than seven, but generally lower than about nine. Right, so so phenylphthalein is kind of perfect uh, for that because again, uh, uh, the pKa sub A is very close to the pH where you expect that color change to take place. There's a second benefit of phenylphthalein, and that is that color X, the color of the weak acid, is is no, it's transparent. Right, so it's very easy to see the appearance of the fuchsia color that is so characteristic of phenylphthalein. At the same time, uh, phenylphthalein will be a really poor indicator for a weak base with a strong acid titration. And the reason is that when you titrate a weak base with a strong acid, at the equivalence point, you have the conjugate acid of the weak base. And that conjugate acid of the weak, uh, of the weak base will make the pH acidic. Right? So this equivalence point, that pH, will actually be well below 7, which means that uh, phenolphthalein, uh, the pK sub A, will be quite different from the pH of the uh, equivalence point, and then it will not be a very good indicator for that weak base with uh, strong acid titration. Right, so again, in this video we have provided a little bit of an introduction of how uh, indicators work in acid-base titrations.